Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. So now is the turn uh, of Ali Hassan Ali from ICTB. Uh, the title of the talk is Understanding Fluctuations in Water, a Molecular Perspective. So, Ali, it's... Yeah, uh, I'm just waiting to... Okay, let me... Entire screen. Share. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So, uh, let me... So thank you, Uriel, for uh, the kind introduction. And where's my screen? There we go. So uh, I'm sorry I changed the title of my talk uh, at last minute. Um, but the message is going to be the same. And basically, what I want to tell you about today is uh, on the many faces of water, uh, uh, basically, on the computer. Um, and so I want to start with a bit of popular culture, uh, which is if you're looking for uh, inspiration on the many faces of water, uh, there's this really nice uh, TV series that ended last year, unfortunately, called The Game of Thrones. And in The Game of Thrones, there's this guy called the, the White Knight, uh, who's made up of ice. Uh, and it's a, it's a really interesting series, but if you're looking for it... Really, to interrupt. Sorry, what? What is that? Ah, White Knight. He's the, the, the knight, the king of the night, or the night king, no White Knight. The night king, night king, night king. Thanks. Um, so it's no, it is. It's very important. And um, so, if you're looking for inspiration on uh, on different phases of water, that's a a, a good place uh, to start. Um, so the question I want to ask today is basically: uh, Is water a silent spectator? in many of the, the processes that we are interested in as chemists, physicists, or biologists, or even as engineers. And uh, what I've been interested in for, uh, for a while now is uh, trying to understand um, molecular fluctuations in liquid water. So I know that we have a, a rather diverse uh, audience here, and so I just wanted to give you a, a bit of context. So um, if you are interested in any type of chemical reaction uh, in water um, or any chemical reaction in sort of solution chemistry, all those chemical reactions happen in a solvent environment. And if you open up any textbook in, in, in basically uh, general chemistry or physical chemistry, um, the, the role of the solvent in chemical reactions in physical processes is, is sort of uh, a, a rather mysterious object that's sort of put uh, uh, under the rug. Uh, on the other side, if you, if you come from the soft matter uh, community, uh, you're obviously uh, well aware that you know, processes like uh, protein folding, uh, the development of, of lipid bilayers, you've, some of the things that you've heard uh, in, in today's talks, uh, um, all these processes happen in water. And so what uh, I'm interested in doing, along with my collaborators, is uh, uh, combining uh, both atomistic simulations uh, as well as smart uh, data mining uh, to learn uh, new physics and, and, and chemistry, essentially. Um, and so um, what I want to do in, in, in my talk today is not get into any specific results, but, um, or not too many specific results, but just to give you an, an overview and, and a context of, of maybe some of the things that you'll hear about uh, in the talks to follow. So, uh, you know, water is, a, is an extremely uh, interesting and, and weird and also a, a very controversial uh, liquid uh, in, in the literature. And so, you know, uh, you've all sort of seen these types of plots. Uh, most liquids, uh, well, you know, when you increase uh, temperature, the density decreases. Uh, liquid water is this anomaly, which is that is a density maximum at 4 degrees Celsius. Um, you can also look at other thermodynamic properties like the compressibility and the heat capacity. And when you look at the compressibility of water, it has this interesting minimum at uh, 319 Kelvin. And then as you uh, undergo cooling, uh, the compressibility increases. And so a lot of these anomalies in water have been attributed to its uh, hydrogen bond network. So, you know, liquid water is, is on average a, a tetrahedral uh, structure 
So it accepts and donates two hydrogen bonds on average. And there have been numerous debates in the literature on um, what is uh, really uh, the origin of these anomalies, uh, and also more importantly, what is the molecular structure of what. And I'm just sort of giving, uh, showing you here uh, some of these uh, papers that have been published, uh, um, both experimental and theoretical work. So this is an interesting review uh, a couple of years ago uh, discussing that liquid water at room temperature uh, exists as, as two coexisting liquids. Um, there's this very recent, very interesting work uh, by uh, Pablo de Benedetti and Francesco Shortino and published in Science just last month, um, where they did uh, very long molecular dynamic simulations, so microseconds and microseconds of several water models and where they claim or they find from their simulations uh, a second critical point uh, in, in now a, a realistic uh, a water model. Um, and these are two, <laughs> at the bottom here, other interesting um, uh, titles. Um, this is a paper published last year by Bill Goddard's group claiming that liquid water is a dynamic polydispersed branched polymer, uh, which was uh, very quickly uh, uh, rebuttaled uh, by Francesco Pezzani and Teresa Head Gordon uh, saying water is not a dynamically polydispersed branch polymer. So that, you know, the, um, you, you'd think that water being one of these, uh, the most ubiquitous liquid um, been studied for centuries, essentially, that we would have figured uh, all of it out, uh, but it continues to pose uh, a lot of interesting puzzles. And I want to, uh, if there's one thing I want you to take away from my presentation is, is, is basically in this slide, and, and that is the role and importance of non-local chemistry. And um, so if you're, if you're a physicist, uh, you might be more inclined to thinking about uh, the role of uh, collective fluctuations, okay? And so this is related to a problem where, where I actually got interested in this, uh, and that is the ionization of water. So in, in textbook chemistry, they'll, uh, you will maybe teach this or you'll write the, the ionization of water as this chemical reaction here. Uh, and so basically it's 2H2O get, gives you uh, the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion. And chemistry textbooks are full of these types of uh, uh, chemical reactions uh, where the solvent bath is sort of uh, ignored or not thought to play an important role uh, in the process. Or it's, it's assumed that it's, it's important, but it's not really understood how and why. So I want to play this movie for you, for, which is a, a movie uh, of the time reversed process of the uh, uh, ionization of water, which is the recombination. And I'll start to play it now. And what you're going to see here is, so this is on the left side is the positive charge, which is the hydronium ion, so this guy here. And then on the right side is the negative charge, which is the hydroxide. And I'm only showing um, uh, those ions with some water molecules sandwiched in between, and the rest of the bath is blurred out. And what you're going to see is something very interesting happen. Uh, so you just saw that the a single proton tried to jump across a, a hydrogen bond. And then there's some fluctuations uh, in the liquid. And eventually, um, there's a, a collective breathing mode in the liquid along this sort of wire that leads to these three protons hopping along the wire and leading to neutral water. And so this was really the, the starting point for me in thinking about uh, the types of collective fluctuations in water. And why this is interesting and challenge is that challenging is that you've got three different components that need to be um, integrated into each other. One is the role of density fluctuations. Uh, the other thing is that water is a directed network, so it has some interesting topological properties. So you have to understand the coupling of both topology and density. And finally, a very important aspect that plays into role, especially in processes like this, is the role of, of charge uh, transfer, okay? Uh, and so this is an, an, an example of a, 
of a really basic chemical reaction in water, uh, which determines the pH of water, so the number of co the concentration of protons in solution, but whose uh, underlying thermodynamics and kinetics and mechanisms is, is still actually not completely understood. Um, so I want to give you um, just one example of uh, a recent problem that we've been interested in, and that is related to uh, density fluctuations and its possible implications. Sorry, Ali. Could I ask yeah. a question from your Please, previous Yeah. Um, what is the uh, underlying uh, interactions um, concluded in the simulation that uh, you showed the film of which of it? Oh, oh, what is the? What is the underlying uh, principles in the simulation? Uh, okay. yeah. um, uh, so, so, so basically, this, this actually uh, relates to something that Ali Naji had in one of his slides, which is uh -huh. uh, essentially, this is the distance where, uh, uh, at the Burham length, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, where, the, where the electrostatic energy gets much larger than thermal energy. And so when uh -huh. you get to this, uh, to this uh, critical distance, uh, you've got you know, uh, very strong charge-charge interactions that yeah. uh, drive these proton transfer uh, processes. So it is not any yeah. kind of quantum interactions included in this, in this simulation? Uh, you, you, you mean uh, practically? OK. So uh, yes, these are ab initio uh, DFT uh, molecular dynamics. Uh -huh, uh -huh. All right, all right. I see. Thank you. Thanks. OK, so um, I want to say a bit about um, density fluctuations and possibly uh, with some crazy implications on the origin of life. Um, and so what I've been interested in for a while is um, inserting hydrophobic solutes in water. And so one way to think about hydrophobic solvation is if you have a, a box of waters, essentially, if you want to create uh, or put a hydrophobic solute in it, you have to wait for uh, some time before an empty space uh, gets available. Okay, so you sit yourself in your water network, you study the, the density fluctuations, and you wait until you know you create uh, an uh, an empty space um, uh, where you can then insert a hydrophobic solute in. And so there have been decades and decades of work done on this, uh, but mostly people focusing on. Uh, the solvation of spherical cavities. Okay, so you can ask questions like, what is the thermodynamics associated with the creation of spherical cavities uh, of different sizes? And this is related to um, the free energy of putting a hydrophobic solute uh, inside. And so um, we started to, uh, to revisit uh, this, and I'll, I'll just essentially tell you uh, the result. Uh, which is we, we're using a lot of uh, classical MD along with uh, a, te a technique uh, known as a uh, Voronoi uh, void uh, tessellation. Uh, and what I'm showing you here are uh, distributions of uh, the normalized volumes uh, of voids, empty spaces, found in liquid water and in liquid methane. And uh, what you find is that there's a, a both liquids are dominated by uh, objects that look like, like spherical cavities. But then you have this long tail of, uh, of cavities here that look like all these exotic uh, shapes that you find here. And if you stare hard enough, you might find uh, a guy um, shooting a basketball net and uh, also a small dinosaur. Um, but the, the take home message here is that then the spontaneous fluctuations in these two liquids, water and methane, uh, lead to these transient dry spots that are quite delocalized and with rather uh, exotic dendritic shapes. And if you start staring at these long enough, you might begin to think and ask, well, um, some of these look like possibly small polymers. Okay? And so um, could there be some interesting relationship between the thermodynamics of the creation of these shapes and the thermodynamics of solvating small hydrophobic polymers? And, and, and the answer is yes. And so I, I, I don't have time to, to go into the details. This was a work done by a, a brilliant postdoc uh, in our group who left, Narjas Ansari. And uh, so what we discovered by doing 
simulations of lots of different small polymers. So for me, a polymer is, you know, uh, an object that looks like this. So it has six uh, to ten membered uh, chains. And what you can find is that they are shapes uh, that naturally occur in the liquid through density fluctuations without the polymer that are consistent with the shapes that the polymer takes. And you can also do the thermodynamics. You can ask, what is the free energy to solvate uh, a polymer like the one on the, on the left and the one on the right versus the thermodynamics of the creation of these uh, empty spaces? And the two are, are, are essentially consistent. Uh, and so what this is sort of suggesting is that you know, there the are these spontaneous fluctuations uh, of the liquid. Uh, this is true for, for both actually uh, uh, liquid water and, and liquid methane that have. Sorry, we have a question from Nawaz. Yes. Hi, Ali. So yes. the question is like that. There are zillions of these shapes. Huh? There are always you can find some particular. It could be a shape of my face or anything else because of the fluctuation. So how can you uh, means, uh, say about like uh, you can find mostly or maybe like cat like or dinosaur like or what so uh, yeah oh. right, right right so so um so basically uh you can because we have you have statistics right so uh you know in, in an ensemble you have uh, uh a million voids okay 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 uh then you can ask uh, out of those a million voids how many of them are uh in, just for the, the sake of argument, branch shaped like the one I'm showing you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then then you then you know what the free energy is to create a branch shape uh, mm -hmm. void, and then you you can compare that to the free energy uh, that you get from like thermodynamic integration of uh, solvating a branch shape like. How so, how you get filter for these branch shapes means uh, is there some criteria like some particular shape lived for long or I don't know means have free energies. Uh, much lower compared to other that you filter them out and then you have to study them later or what what is the criteria to filter out the particular All right. so okay um so uh, in the case of um for example in the case of the uh, the the branch shaped mm -hmm. uh, we have a we have a way to to ask what is the or to quantify what is the overlap in the the ensemble of the branch shaped polymer when the polymer is there mm -hmm to uh, when the polymer is not there. So we, we, have a, we have a way to match it, uh, I basically. See. Uh, I see. Yeah. I see. OK, thank you, Ali. Thanks, Roz. Um, so, uh, so OK, without going into details, uh, what one can then do is then sort of ask, how does this change as a function of the phase diagram of water? And uh, I don't have time to get into this, but what's interesting is if you undergo supercooling, where there, a lot of these interesting anomalies, you get uh, the clustering of these uh, large uh, voids and forming uh, large connected regions of, of, of empty space. Okay. Um, okay. So in the last couple of minutes uh, of my talk, I want to just sorry. Uh, may I ask a question, Ali? Uh, go ahead, Reza. Okay. Uh, just I'm wondering that if the if some kind of the polymers can fill this void, maybe if we look at the solubility of the different polymers we can we should find something very a, a peak when the size of the polymers or shape of the polymers or the size of the voids that you have here because that's, that's, an, that's a fantastic point yes um that's a great question uh so we we only measured the solubility for these class of polymers mm -hmm. uh let's say six to ten uh my my guess is that uh anything above 14 uh, would have a big drop in the solubility because uh, it becomes much rarer and rarer to find those things through spontaneous fluctuations in, in, in the liquid. I'm, I'm just wondering if in the experiments people have seen such kind of the. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting. Um, the point. The point is the. Uh, well, you would have to yes. So one would have to design a polymer like the ones that I have, like wire versus branch. Mm -hmm. for example uh and try to see as a function of increasing the size in a in a wire versus branch do you see uh, a peak in the solubility yeah that's an interesting question yes 
That's a. I don't think anyone's done it, huh? But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so uh, in the last couple of minutes that I have, I just want to let's say give some perspectives on uh, where I think the real interesting stuff is happening in in the field of let's say physical chemistry of, of water. Uh, there's a lot of interesting problems in interfaces. So whether you're looking at a glass of water or you're sitting on the sand. Uh, looking at silica water interfaces, or you're dealing with proteins, uh, all of these substances involve some boundary between uh, uh, one surface and another. And the question, the basic question is the following. How does the structure and dynamics and electronic properties of water change near these interfaces? Okay, and so there's lots and lots of experiments and also simulations showing and suggesting, and again, full of controversies, on the extent of these uh, perturbations and changes. And so I just want to motivate one of the examples. Uh, you'll hear about this more from Ricardo, uh, either tomorrow or on Friday. And that's related to soap bubbles. So we've been a part of a, a project here that's related to artificial photosynthesis, uh, which sort of has this idea that one can use soap bubbles uh, to emulate uh, what a leaf does. And so a leaf takes light and converts that into chemical energy, right? And so the idea is, can one synthesize artificially uh, a membrane or a series of membranes and proteins like you'd have in a leaf in uh, a soap bubble uh, morphology? Um, and so I, 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 I will not get into the details since Ricardo will show some of these results. But there's some very interesting um, uh, questions. Uh, and this is one of my last slides uh, that that come up from uh, these types of uh, synergies. Um, so this is a, a snapshot of the simulation of uh, this water with a, a surfactant, so that, like the one that uh, Edgar was talking about. And so some of the questions that, that, that one can ask and what experimentalists are interested in are, uh, for example, what is the thickness of the interface? Uh, how much water penetrates uh, into uh, the surfactant? Um, what is the role of uh, orientational electronic polarization at the interface? Um, to what extent and by how much does water slow down uh, in these regions? Uh, can one measure uh, a local viscosity, for example, uh, that can be used uh, in you know continuum type models uh, like the ones that uh, Ali Naji was talking about as well as uh, Ali Rajapur? And finally, if you've got solutes like water or gases that are moving through the interface, uh, how do they diffuse through? And uh, are there traps that affect uh, the diffusion? So this, this is a problem that we're uh, the interdisciplinary a joint collaboration with the, the people uh, that I've listed on the bottom. And I'd be interested to hear uh, some of your thoughts uh, on addressing these types of questions. I'll end with this slide here. So uh, going back to this where I started, uh, so uh, I'm a firm believer in, in the use of atomistic simulations. Um, I've sort of been Ali, slightly... Yes. We're a little bit over time. Ah, okay. Fine, fine. I, I stop. I stop. I stop. I stop. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, we don't have time for more questions. In fact, uh, is a, a will kind of we lose the, the, the lose the, the time of the break because the break was supposed to be until 5 and it's 504 so i suggest to continue with the next talk uh, just to respect the program uh, scheduled because um, Everyone. May I suggest just a five minute breaks? Well, I think we anyway are I think over it's, 10 I minutes don't know if everyone will be able to do that. Maybe they have other commitments or I don't know. If everyone is okay, we can take five minutes. But if someone is not okay, just say it and we can continue. 